Hello, it's Martin from Weisley Automotive and I'm in this lovely 60 amp hour BMW i3 in the Hatfield area on my way down back to London. If I turn the car on I still have 68 miles of range, 87%. That should get me back without any problems, but if you've been following the news, Tesla started opening up the supercharger network and that happened only yesterday so I thought it would be a great opportunity to take this car given it has CCS and try it out. Not all sites are available yet. To know which ones you can use you need to go into the Tesla app. Now given I'm a driver on Arthur's Model Y that's the first thing which pops up but if you just make an account, download the app and you don't own a Tesla the app will look a bit more like this. So I need to go into charge your non-Tesla section and we can see that we've got Uxbridge but if I go to Grace Supercharger even though it's a bit further away it's not as much of a detour as going to Uxbridge. This is a V3 so up to 250 kilowatts the i3 can only take 50 so we will see how that goes and the price at the moment is 61p per kilowatt hour or it's a bit lower with a membership the price seems to vary by site, so if I go back and I look at the Uxbridge site, it's 42p per kilowatt hour and only 28p with the membership. But without further talking, it seems that all 16 stalls are available, so let's get the directions. 41 miles, perfect, but before I go, I will set up the payment method in advance just so I don't have to fumble with the phone when I'm at the supercharger. To do that I go into the account section, wallet and add payment methods. And I will use the company card in this case. Excellent, that's done, it was pretty straightforward. So now back to the maps and I am ready to go. While I'm on the road, let's address the situation from the point of view of Tesla drivers. Yes, opening up the network will, at least on paper, remove one of the biggest selling points of Teslas. However, I don't think the difference will be that dramatic in practice. The electricity prices, while reasonable by 2022 standards, are definitely on the high end, without the aforementioned 1099 monthly membership. So I suspect most EV drivers will only use the supercharger network as a last resort. Keep in mind, this opening is gradual and it seems larger sites, which are often empty, are prioritized over others. It also means Tesla can get easier access to government or public funding and considering I'm heading to a location with zero vehicles charging, hopefully improve return on investment and use the money to grow the network further, benefiting all electric cars. With that said, time to get out of the car to see how I get home. I am plugged in and charging. Super simple to get everything set up. I did have to fill out some more billing details in the app, but then just had to choose the particular stall I was plugged into, which is clearly labeled on the unit itself. And with that, the car started charging. The fantastic thing is that just like the Ionity app, this Tesla app shows you the current charging power and the amount of energy delivered in pretty much real time. I had to go to the bathroom, I've been plugged in for less than 30 minutes and I'm already up to 96% and I'm only drawing 3 kilowatts. I'm pointing this out because some of these older EVs like the i3 do not really show you much charging information. So as you can see in the instrument cluster all you can see is a bar going up and you can scroll through to the exact percentage but you don't see the charging power in kilowatts or anything like that. My slight concern is that even though I'm at such a high state of charge and I'm essentially down to trickle charging, the app did not notify me that the car will be full soon and it's time to unplug or that the charging power has dropped well below 50 kilowatts. Hopefully that's just because I already have a Tesla in my account and whenever you supercharge a Tesla for the first time it gives you a quick tutorial on basic charging etiquette. But this is one of the things which could cause quite a few problems when you will get EV novices charging all the way to 100% on sites which could possibly be busy. Don't worry, I'm not inconveniencing anyone. There are literally only two other Teslas and still about 13 stalls available. If I go outside, there is one more problem. It may look like the cable is the 
perfect length for the i3, nothing on the floor, but if I zoom out, it still looks fine. But the problem is that the charge port on the i3 is on the opposite side to a Tesla. So in the UK, it's on the driver's side. That means that if I'm plugged into this stall, let's say a different i3 would be plugged into that one, one more into that one, and lastly we've got one here, but then we have got an empty charging space all the way at the end. It's because these Teslas, they are designed to plug in from the left side when they are reversed in, and that's how the stalls are labeled as well. There's this lovely graphic going around on social media showing you how to park and plug in depending on where the charge port is on your particular car. It may not always be possible because if you look at these charging stalls at this particular site, they are not right behind the car but in between the parking spaces. So trying to stay within the space but move the car a bit to one side or another to reach the cable will not be possible. On the good side, if you look at the very end, it seems that Tesla has thought ahead here because there is one blank parking spot, which would definitely work well for an i3, which could use this stall and then all of the other cars would need to use essentially the incorrect stall, but it means everybody could charge without any problems. The last thing I want to know is whether anyone can just come up and unplug you. So this little circle should be a button. And I press that. And it has stopped charging and given the car is unlocked, I can unplug. I guess we will see whether there will be any Tesla on us trying to unplug other cars. But hopefully everyone will be sensible and responsible. So we will be able to enjoy the chargers. And at the end of the day, more competition is always good for the customer. And I think that's about it. I just wanted to make this quick video to share the news and show you how the access for non-Teslas works. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. And as always, see you in the next video.